going on, everybody? This is Sean Ross, Like Music. Today, I want to talk about this record right here. This is Luke Vibert's Big Soup, released on Moax on July 7th, 1997. Now, as a big fan of Luke Vibert, Wagon Christ, and all of his different monikers that he's released music under throughout the years, as well as having recently been on a bit of a nostalgic, old-school Ninja Tune kick, I've been going through picking up not only the records that I've had at one point over the last 20 years, but also the records that I've always known about and have always been curious about, but for one reason or another, I've never been able to get a hold of until recently. And one of those records was this guy right here. Seeing as how I've always been curious about it and always wanted to hear how it sounded and compare it to all the different Wagon Christ records that I've heard throughout the years, today I wanted to let you know whether or not this guy is worth checking out and how it compares to all of the different releases that he's been putting out throughout the years. So with all that being said, yeah, let's talk about this guy. So for those of you who may not know, Luke Francis Vibert was born in Cornwall in the UK in 1973. Much like another famous electronic music producer who grew up in the same area, Luke Vibert started releasing music in the late 80s, early 90s, but started off originally playing in bands. First in a punk band called Five Minute Fashion, then in a Beastie Boys-esque group called The Hate Brothers, before finally switching over to becoming an electronic music producer. In 93, he released his first electronic music album with an old school friend of his, Jeremy Simmons, on Aphex Twins label Reflex entitled Wares, with a follow-up of unreleased recordings coming out in 2008 called Rodulate. Shortly after, in 94, he would gain the attention and be commissioned to make an ambient album by a London-based rave techno ambient chill-out record label called Rising High. What he gave them instead was a skeletal, minimal, noodly, experimental electronic album called Fat Lab Nightmare, under a new and arguably his best-known moniker, Wagon Christ. From there, he would continue to show off his versatility in a multitude of genres like drum and bass, jungle, techno, dubstep, acid, trip-hop, and more, and gain notoriety with a variety of different collaborations, releases, pseudonyms, and record labels so numerous that it's almost impossible to mention them all here. According to Luke Vibert himself, in an interview with Resident Advisor after the release of his disco-flavored album Courier District 4 in 2000. 15, he stated that his Wagon Christ project was nearest and dearest to him since making that kind of down-tempo, trip-hop music come so naturally to him, despite no record label really being interested in that kind of music anymore. Yet despite this, he's remained persistent with his signature trip-hop sound by releasing projects across a wide variety of labels, with the most recent project of this nature, Recepticon, being released on Planet Mew and a UK-based label called People of Rhythm in 2020. But lest we forget the central focus of this review, Big Soup, which was released on the Uncle Master mind James Lavelle's label Mo Wax in 97, the album would cement the sound that he created for himself with the release of Wagon Christ's Throbbing Pouch in 95, but where that album seemed to be still mixing the electronic ambience and techno through a hip-hop lens that he'd slightly started to explore with the album Fat Lab Nightmare, Big Soup goes all in on the sound that he would become so well known for today, namely the heavily layered funky drum breaks, quirky, playful dime store samples, house rumbling sub bass, and the occasional deviation into acid house and techno. While hardly the most celebrated album in his voluminous career, Big Soup did in fact make it as high as number five on Fact Magazine's top 50 trip-hop albums of all time in 2016, ranking it just below other beloved classics such as Massive Attack's Blue Lines, DJ Shadows introducing Portishead's Dummy, and Tricky's Maxin... Uh, I, I can never figure out how to pronounce that fucking album's name. But anyways, yeah, it's right, this one this one right here. So the album does have that going for it. So with all that being said, what do I think about this album? I will say I think this might be Luke Vibert's easiest album to get into. It doesn't really have any of the sort of quirks and sort of eccentricism 
of a lot of his later Wagon Christ releases or some of his other pseudonyms. And in fact, it really feels like it was kind of cut from the same cloth as another project that came out around this time, Plug. Because a lot of the same sort of sounds and samples like xylophones and bells that were sampled on that record actually end up showing up here. And there is the occasional deviation into Plug-esque drum and bass on this record, but it doesn't really go into the amount of intricacy that that album goes into in terms of how it chops up drum breaks. And instead, what really stands out to me is it really feels like Luke Viber went into this record trying to make a whole bunch of very, very solid hip hop instrumentals. So what you really end up getting on here is some really great layered funky drum breaks, a lot of filtered bass, the occasional funny sample, but definitely much more restrained than sort of the sound that he would explore on albums that would shortly precede this, like Musipal and Tally Ho. And the occasional, occasional very interesting sample. I, I really don't know how to else to explain it. And thusly, I feel like this album is really, really easy to get into. It's funky. It's very cool. It's fairly relaxing. It's upbeat when it wants to be. It's more down tempo and chill when it wants to be. I will say that there aren't really like super standout tracks on here, but as a listening experience as a whole, I found very little to complain about this record. So in that regard, I highly recommend that you check this out. There's just one problem with this album. In terms of availability, as far as I can tell, it's way easier to pick up his later records than it is to actually get a copy of this. This album is not on Spotify. It's not on Apple Music. If you want to get a copy of it, you either have to buy it on CD, which is relatively inexpensive, or pick up an LP, which the starting price I checked on Discogs is around 40 bucks, but it can go as high as 100 bucks. This album was never repressed, which is really a shame because I think more people should hear this, but having that barrier to entry and knowing that there are much easier to obtain Luke Vibert records out there, it sort of puts me in this weird conflicted space because I definitely feel like more people should listen to this. And in some ways, this is some of my favorite Luke Vibert material because I think it's so eminently listenable that I can kind of just throw it on at any given moment, as opposed to some of his other stuff, which I have to be in a much more specific mood to really enjoy. Yet my recommendation for this album is all really held back, unfortunately, by that availability issue. So if you're willing to plop down the money to pick this up, don't sleep on this. This is absolutely worth the money. It's definitely one of a kind, and it definitely stands out in comparison to all of his other releases. So as you can tell, I'm pretty conflicted about this. On one hand, very easy to get into. On another hand, not so easy to get your hands on. So if you're already a Luke Vibert fan and you haven't picked this up, definitely grab this. If you're willing to plop down the cash or if you don't mind just picking it up on CD, also make sure you grab this because this is actually a real gem in Luke Vibert's vast catalog. And in that regard, I really can't recommend it enough. Just be advised. It ain't cheap, but yeah, I think uh, that's all I've got to say about this record, and I'm going to leave it there. So yeah, pretty cool. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching. If you've listened to this album before, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And also let me know what your favorite Luke Vibert project or release is. I want to see if there's any interest because I might go a little bit more in depth into some of his other projects, background, whatever. So if you like this video, make sure to like it and make sure to comment. I want to hear from you guys. If you want to hear this record for yourself, please head over to my WordPress blog because that's where I'll post music links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel and make sure you go follow me over on Twitch for live from the record room my weekly DJ live streams there you can hear me play records like the ones that I talk about in these videos as well as a whole host of records in my collection that I don't get a chance to talk about on this channel links to everything as always down in the description but that's going to be it for me today guys thanks as always for watching and I will catch you in the next video so until then peace out <laughs>